Hello everyone. Hi. Welcome to the channel of Wall Street Mojo. Friends, we are going to learn a tutorial on earning uh, enterprise value to EBITDA multiple. So in case we are in this case, we are going to learn a formula and why it is much more better than the price to earning ratio. So the first hand first thing earning value is basically enterprise value while EBITDA is earning before interest tax depreciation and amortization and this the value of EV to EBITDA are used in order to find the EV to EBITDA ratio of an organization and this metric is widely used to analyze and, and measure an organization's ROI that is return on investment as well as its value. There is a example or a graph that I have taken that is the enterprise value to EBITDA of Amazon and Walmart. The enterprise value as you can see in this particular graph we note that the EV to EBITDA multiple of Amazon is close enough to 29.6 while whereas the EV to EBITDA for Walmart is close enough to 7.6. Does this mean that Walmart is trading cheap or and we should buy Walmart compared to Amazon? So in this detailed tutorial on uh, EV to EBITDA ratio we are going to discuss many things and let's get into the nitty gritty of the same the first and the first and the foremost thing what is the enterprise value the numerator see enterprise value shows the company's total valuation and EV is used as a better alternative to the market capitalization the value that is calculated as enterprise value is better considered and is, is considered better than the market capitalization because it is calculated by adding more vital components to the value of the market capitalization. The added components to enterprise value calculation is preferred interest. Then you have minority interest, the total cash and cash equivalents, the value of debt, minority interest and the preferred interest are added with the calculated calculation of the market capitalization. When you add this, you get your what your enterprise value and we can thus write a basic formula of enterprise value is EV is equal to your market cap plus the minority interest plus the preference shares. You have to deduct from this the cash so that will give you your enterprise value so theoretically the calculated enterprise value can be considered as the price or value at which the company is bought by an investor so in such a case the buyer will have to take up the debt of the organization too as his responsibility in other words it is said that the particular value will be pocketed by him too the inclusion over here in case of this that is the debt over here in this which gives the enterprise value its added advantage for the purpose of organization's value rep representation. This is because the debt is to be considered seriously and when it comes to any takeover situation. For example, it will be more profitable to acquire an organization with a market capitalization of close enough to 10 million with no debt than acquiring an organization with the same market capitalization and a debt of having 5 million. Okay, apart from the debt, the enterprise value calculated also include other special components which are important in arriving at an accurate figure of the firm's value. Let's understand the next thing that is the EBITDA portion. So when we talk about EBITDA, EBITDA on or earning before interest tax depreciation and amortization, it is basically a measured representation of the organization's financial performance. So with the help of uh, the this, we can find out the potential of a particular firm in terms of the profits and its operation can, it, it, what operations it can make. So we can write the formula of EBITDA is, is, is equal to your operating profit, okay, your operating profit plus any non-cash expenditure like debt or amortization. So that will give you your EBITDA. Now, here the operating profit is equal to the net profit. That is the uh, interest taxes added together. So the depreciation expense and amortization expense play a major role in EBITDA calculation. So in order to understand about the EBITDA to the fullest, the two terms that have been explained is depreciation and amortization. So depreciation is basically an accounting technique for allocating the cost of the tangible assets over the useful life. So businesses depreciate the long term assets for both tax and accounting purposes. Uh, for tax purposes, the business deduct the uh, cost of tangible assets 
that is the cost of uh, you can say fixed assets and uh, they purchase as a business expense but business should depreciate this assets in accordance with the standards rules regarding how when the deduction could be made in case of the amortization amortization can be can be explained as the paying of the debt with the fixed repayment schedules or installments over the particular amount of time so two common example of this are mortgage okay and uh, you have automobile loan so in additionally refers to the spreading of the capital capital expenses for intangible assets over a particular period of time again for accounting and tax purposes so ebitda is actually you can say net income with interest tax depreciation amortization further added back to it so ebitda may be employed to analyze the compare the profitability of different organization and industries as it eliminates the effects of financing and accounting decisions ebitda is commonly utilized in valuation ratio in valuation ratios compared to the enterprise worth and revenue so ebitda is basically you can say a non gap measure okay and is reported and used internally to measure the performance of the company now let's see basically some of the details regarding ev to ebitda ratio or the enterprise multiple so now basically that we have we, we know that about ev and ebitda so we have we can look at how they are used to get the ev to ebitda ratio or in other words enterprise multiple okay so the ev to ebitda ratio looks at the firm as the potential acquirer okay and taking into consideration the company's debt which is which alternative multiples like price to earning ratio that is the pe ratio does not embarrass embrace so this can be calculated with the help of the enterprise value formula so the enterprise value formula is going to be is equal to your enterprise value ev divided by ebitda okay so now next let's consider the consideration regarding ev to ebitda forward versus trailing see ev to ebitda can be further be divided into in, in investment banking analysis as trailing and forward so i'm just writing over here ev to ebitda and it has two things that is first is trailing and second is forward so in case of trailing trailing ev to ebitda formula that is ttm or trailing 12 months is equal to your enterprise value divided by the ebitda over the previous 12 months over the previous 12 months but in case of forward trailing pv likewise the forward ev2 ebitda formula it is for the next 12 months got it so that's the difference the key difference here is the ebitda denominator that is the we use historical ebitda in ev2 ebitda in in trailing ev2 ebitda and we use forward or ebitda forecast forecast in the forward ev2 ebitda let's look at the example of amazon see amazon's trailing ev2 ebitda is close enough to 29.58x and the forward is 22.76x let's see the chart of ev2 ebitda of uh, amazon can you see over here the amazon to ev2 ebitda is close enough to 29.58 and the forward one is 22.76 so now let's see how the ev2 calculation of ev2 ebitda has been done now let's uh, see let's take an example over here from the above table and learn how this is calculated see there are ratings over here the price shares and all details are given ev ttm is given ebitda TT, uh, ttm detail and ev to ebitda ttm details are given so the enterprise value formula is what market cap plus debt minus cash and the market capitalization is price into number of shares so in case of triple b over here it is going to be 7 is the price and into your number of shares that will give you market cap enterprise value is 350 plus 400 minus the cash that is 100 so that will give you your 650 as your enterprise value the trailing 12 month ebitda of triple b is close enough to as you can see over here it is 30 right so ev to ebitda ttm is going to be 650 divided by 30 which gives you 21.7x likewise if we want to find ev to ebitda for of triple b forward we just need to divide the forward data that is over here in case of uh, forward data is 33 so 650 divided by 33 that gives you 19.7x 
Now, basically over here, some of the points that has to be considered with respect to trailing versus forward EV to EBITDA is that if in this scenario, if the EBITDA is expected to grow, then then the forward to then the forward EV to EBITDA will be lower than the historical or trailing EV to EBITDA. From the above table that we we, we just saw, the triple A and triple B shown an increase in the EBITDA. Hence, their forward EV to EBITDA are lower than the trailing PV2 than the trailing price to earning. On the other hand, if the EBITDA is expected to decrease, then you will note that the forward EV to EBITDA will be higher than the trailing to EV to EBITDA. This can be observed in in our table in company Triple D. Let me show you. Can you see over here Triple D, which is standing at 21x, right? So, however, you know, if you see the forward EV to EBITDA increased to 26.3 and then 35x in 2017 and 2018 respectively. So, one should not only compare the trailing EV to EBITDA for valuation comparison between the two companies, but also look at the forward EV to EBITDA to focus on the relative value, whether the EV to EBITDA difference reflects the company's long-term growth prospect and financial stability or not. Now, how to find the target price using EV to EBITDA ratio? So what, so what is exactly the significance of the enterprise multiple? See, investor primarily invest in user, uh, primary uses and organizations EV to EBITDA ratio in order to determine whether the company is undervalued or overvalued. So uh, basically, a low EV to EBITDA value indicates that the particular organization may well be undervalued and a high EV to EBITDA ratio well indicates that the organization may be overvalued. So an EV to EBITDA ratio is beneficial for transactional comparison transactional comparison because that ignores the distorting effects of the individual countries taxation policies it is also employed to find out the attractive takeover candidate since enterprise value also includes debt basically enterprise value also considered debt and is thus a much better metric than the market cap for mergers and acquisition an organization with low ev to ebitda ratio will be viewed as decent takeover candidate now, which sectors are best suited for valuation using EV to EBITDA? So there are sectors like oil and uh, gas, automobile, uh, then we have a uh, cement sector, we have uh, steel sector and energy sector too, that is steel sector and energy sector. So However, EV to EBITDA cannot be used when the current cash flow is negative. So this is one backdrop over here. There are some limitations to EV to EBITDA is that, you know, EBITDA is actually non-GAAP. EBITDA is basically a non-GAAP measure because that allows a large amount of discretion on what is and what is not added with the calculation. Because this also implies that organization is usually modify the things included in the EBITDA calculation from one reporting period to another. See, EBITDA initially came into common use with leverage buyout, which is known as LBO. LBO okay in the 80s and at that time it had employed to indicate the ability of an organization to service debt so as time passed it became widespread in industry with expensive assets that had to be written down over the long period of time see EBITDA is currently commonly quoted by the several firms particularly within the tech sector but with the several firms too and even when it is not secure so on the very final conclusion end you can say EV to EBITDA ratio is really very important and it is widely used metric to analyze company's total value. This metric has been successfully in solving the problems encountered while using the traditional metric like PE ratio and hence it is preferred over them. Also as this ratio is basically a capital, you can say capital structure neutral and it can be effectively used to compare organization with different ranges of leverage, which was not possible in the case of the simpler ratio. Thank you everyone.